You. playing with that elementary school girl. She was very bright. Her face shone with the warm light of new life. And then there's me, cooped up in the hospital, struggling to breathe. I'm just a faint glimmer compared to her dazzling light. Misery is a harsh mistress. I feel as though I'm lying in an unyielding darkness. Do you understand how I feel? And if you're not lying, then you're just ignorant. <sighs> Any day now, I'm going to die. I have an incurable hereditary disease. Unless you're in my situation, you can't understand how I feel. But I prefer it that way. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. There are no platitudes to stave off death. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to depress you or anything. It's been quite a while since I spoke to someone my own age. It's only natural for those dwelling in the depths of darkness to yearn for the light. I'm glad we could meet, though. If there is a god, I'll be able to thank him soon enough. This was just a chance encounter, nothing more. Goodbye. didn't expect you to come back. Nobody treats me like a normal person. Not even my friends or family. They all keep their distance and say, oh, what a poor soul. All they feel is pity and curiosity towards me. Sorry to disappoint them, but I'm not the poor soul they think I am. Dying isn't so bad, is it? What's the point of dragging out your time in this world anyhow? You must have a hopelessness festering within as well, then. I can't remember a time without it. Thank you for coming today. You seem different from the rest. I'm not sure I know how to describe it exactly, but 
You don't look on me with pity the way everyone else does. Deserve this body. <laughs> I hope we can meet again. to have someone with me. Why do I have to face this alone? Why am I the one? I can't run around like I did as a child anymore because my legs and heart won't even let me. All that's left is to draw my sheets around me and count the beats of my heart until they stop forever. Why is this only happening to me? No one could. I don't even know. I mean, I understand the reason I'm dying, but what even is the meaning of it? There isn't any meaning to life that I can find, so perhaps I'm not missing all that much. I wish I could run away, but if my body were capable of that, I wouldn't be here anyway. No matter what I do, my body is there to remind me I'm going to die. Why me? <coughs> Please don't leave just yet. It's almost too much for me if I'm alone. <sighs> yes, you're right. But I'd still like to talk for just a little longer. I'm feeling a little better now. Thank you. It's starting to get dark. Don't worry, I'll be fine now. I hope I can see you again soon. Today. I know it probably looked dire last time, right? Sorry if I scared you. I'd been reading a book before we met that day. I guess I got so absorbed in it that I didn't realize how cold the wind was. Do you enjoy reading books? I see. That's something we have in common then. Nowadays, reading books is all I do. I find that they give me a way to escape everything else. I can just get lost in the book's private world. Do you read books all the way through? Oh, do you? I don't usually reach the end either, although I think our reasoning differs. The more engaging a story is, the more I want to get lost in it. But I'm always afraid to finish it. Because once I finish the story, I'll have to come back to reality. This inescapable body of mine. Heartwarming stories filled with hope. Those are the kinds of books I like to read. They give me a little solace when I have to come back to the real world.
It looks like the sun is already setting. Time is so ruthless. I hope we have another chance to talk. I got really into my reading last night, and never went to sleep. I thought I'd be fine since I've lost sleep from the pain and anxiety of my illness before, but I suppose I'm not doing my health any favors like this. Thank you. Or rather, I suppose I should apologize. It's been so long since anyone told me off or anything. I came out here because I was hoping to find you. I only have so much time left, you know. Do you remember when I said I like reading heartwarming stories? There are as many stories as there are stars in the sky, but I don't think any of them are what I'm looking for. The problem is, none of those stories were written for people like me. I guess I'm just being selfish. Just like I am with you, too. You're always coming to visit me, keeping me company and talking with me. How much of your valuable time have you spent with me? I don't deserve it. You're spoiling me. That's why I like you so much, though. Sorry, I was in such a good mood that I overexerted myself. I'd like to see you again sometime. Hey. Thanks. I never feel like. Say. How do you feel about a pink alligator? I thought so too. I knew you'd understand. See, it's the main character of a story that I'm writing. He was born in a lush green forest but he turned out to be pink. He stands out so much that he can't hunt for food easily, so he's always hungry. The other animals dislike him and call him disgusting, almost like he's cursed. So he was used to living alone. But one day, he made a friend. It was a little bird that had trouble flying. Every day, the bird would stand on the pink alligator's back and practice. It's kind of embarrassing to tell you this. So, what do you think? Really? I've never written a story before, so I'm worried it's not going to be very good. But what matters is that I'm writing it for myself. Perhaps I can show you the entire novel someday. I actually came up with it the other day. I decided I wanted to write a heartwarming story just for myself. I'd like it to be a hopeful tale about finding the meaning in one's life. I think of you when I write. It's like I can hear you telling me not to die just yet. The wind is going to pick up soon. I can feel these kinds of things now. I hope I have enough time. We should leave. I'd like to see you again sometime. Right. Thank you. 
I've been writing more of my story. How much did I tell you about? Oh, right. The pink alligator and the bird became friends, right? This was the alligator's first friend, and he was very happy. They started going to the river every day, and the alligator would listen to the little bird sing. But the pink alligator still had trouble hunting because of his color. He was so terribly easy to spot, and his prey always had plenty of time to escape. Eventually, he became so hungry that he grew dizzy. And one afternoon, he accidentally ate the bird as it slept in his mouth. Of course, he immediately realized what he'd done. He drank swamp water to vomit his friend back up, but he was too late. The bird was already dead. After that, he couldn't bring himself to eat anything. That's as far as I've written. I haven't decided on an ending yet. Oh, is it really that dark? For me, it's hard to tell. The words I use come from my own life. I don't really have a point of reference. But I see. So, this is depressing for others. You know, when I mentioned I was writing a diary, that was a lie. I was writing my will. I couldn't face reality, and I was essentially screaming curses into my notebook. For now, though, I'm writing my story in the same notebook. It probably isn't very good, but it contains some things that I've learned during my short life. When it's done, I'd like you to be the first to read it. Meeting you is why I started writing it, you know? I've been trying to come up with a good ending, but I just can't decide, and I'm running out of time. I've got to go now, but I hope to see you again. Give me a minute so I can calm down. The pain comes and goes, but I'll be fine once it passes. It's getting better. Thanks. I stopped taking my medicine. It's not going to cure me anyway, right? It just eases my pain and suffering. My medicine makes me drowsy. And if my hands go numb, then I can't write. I have to finish my story. The reason I haven't finished my story is because I haven't found the meaning of my life yet. I'll get absorbed in my writing, erase it, and then lose sight of how to reach the end. When I'm with you, I can almost see it. It's because you've been here for me. It seems like you might have given me a reason to finish. I'm probably writing this book to find my own meaning in life. And if I do find it, if I do finish the story, I hope we have a little more time together after that. for today, but I hope to see you again. So, I'd like you to celebrate with me. As of today, I am a free individual. No, 
not quite yet. Almost, though. I just came from the hospital. They were going to admit me, but it's no longer needed. I guess my body is too weak to undergo surgery. So I've opted out of examinations and medication. I'm done with the hospital. Now, I'm just waiting for the end. But I don't feel like I'm being singled out anymore. Everyone is waiting to die all the same. Some just have longer to wait than others. But once the time comes, it's the same for all of us. I'm still a little lonely, but I've moved past the sadness. Could I get a better look at you? I want to remember your face. Thank you. I'm a little bit tired today. The story is almost done, so I'll show it to you soon. I'll come see you again. my story and wanted to show it to you. I was having a lot of trouble with the ending, but I finally figured it out. After the alligator ate his friend, the bird, he cried and cried for a long time. In fact, he was so sad that he drowned in his own tears. His tears became a sparkling lake around which grew beautiful flowers and a tree that bore delicious fruit. The other animals in the forest came there often to relax, but none of them knew the alligator had created it, or that he was gone. The end. That's the ending I decided on. Even though the alligator didn't find meaning in his life, the residents of the forest did. They just didn't realize it. The meaning of my life isn't something I should spend my time on. It's more about how I was able to affect others. So, for me, or you, or anyone, just simply existing gives our lives meaning. People can't survive without help from others. We all depend on one another. I don't know how to explain it, but does that make sense? I'm glad. This is the notebook I wrote my story in. I've poured my heart and soul into it. I wanted to give you this, since you shared my final moments. <sighs> my body feels lighter. I'm so grateful to have met you. It seems so insignificant, but maybe there was some meaning in it for both of us. Thank you. In the end, I'm glad that I was born.
Hello there. Oh, excuse me. Are you? <laughs> so it was you. Oh, excuse me. I'm Miss Kamiki, Akinari's mother. My son talked about you a lot. I was just thinking about him. If you have time, would you like to stay and talk for a while? That's wonderful. Please sit down. Today is a special day. What a coincidence seeing you today. It must be another one of God's whims. Today is my son's Akinari's birthday. He'd be 20 if he was still alive. Only 19 years. It was too soon. He was almost an adult, but he never made it. Akinari had a genetic disease. I'm completely healthy, but him... <sighs> the doctors detected it when he was born. They knew he wouldn't live to see adulthood. Every day, I worried whether he'd wake up the next morning. I blamed myself for what he inherited. But he said something to me near the end. I'm sorry to have brought so much pain into your life, Mother. I'm glad that I was born into this world. I'm glad to have been your son. Thank you for the life you've given me. He... he suffered so much, and yet he still said that to me. But... Akinari brought me so much happiness, too. Feeling his warmth as I carried him in my arms after he was born. Those tiny hands. <laughs> that first smile. Hearing his breathing as he slept at night. Every day, I was so grateful he was alive. <laughs> Every day, I found new joy in him. And now, I'm so alone, and there's nothing I can do. But my boy gave me so much. I have to keep going, looking straight ahead. That's how I want to live. I'll eat the finest foods, visit the most exotic places. I'll do everything, absolutely everything that Akinari couldn't. I'll have so many stories to tell him about the things I've done on that day. When we meet again on the other side, if I didn't have that to look forward to, I don't know how I could go on. That reminds me, when my son's condition worsened, he started writing a children's story. But when I was cleaning out his room, I never found his notebook. He said he wanted you to be the first one to see it when he was done. Then he laughed and said I would be second. <laughs> I suppose he wasn't able to finish the story. My son, he gave it to you? I... I see. So you did. I'm so glad. That was my only regret. It was awful to think that he wasn't able to finish his project. Oh, you should hold on to his notebook. I'm sure that's what he would want to. I'll hear the story from him directly when I see him on the other side. Now I have one more thing to look forward to. I'm glad I could finally meet you. Thank you. Before I go, let this old woman give you one piece of advice. Take good care of the ones you hold dear. If you wait until their day comes, it's too late. Clinging to their cold bodies won't bring them back. Everyone who's born will die someday. Not just Akinari, or me, or even you.
it's all the same. So before that happens, it doesn't take a grand gesture. You don't have to make a big production of it. But if you love someone, let them know it. We all go through life with the same struggles, the same heartbreak. We should all lift each other up with the same love and kindness as well. I'm sure you have something precious you can share with people too. Don't ever forget it. <laughs>